Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Geo here, and today we're going to be talking not one, not two, certainly not three, but four brand new manga series at the Shonen Jump magazine. Now let's get started. Four brand new series debuted on the Shonen Jump magazine, or in this case, the app which I'm subscribed to and currently reading uh, these four titles. So let's start with The Elusive Samurai from Yusei Matsui, also known as the mangaka behind series like Assassination Classroom. Set in feudal Japan in between the Kamakura and Muromachi periods, our hero Hojo Takatoki is a boy on the run that history all but forgot. When the Kamakura shogunate is overthrown by Ashikaga Takauji, Takatoki's family and standing are viciously taken away from him and he must flee to the far reaches of the land to survive and seek out his revenge. So when this title was first announced, The Elusive Samurai, I thought, okay, cool, I dig it. I think this is going to be a fun, uh, wacky adventure uh, about this samurai kid. He probably has some abilities. Not so much. It just turns out that this is sort of a historical fiction retelling of events in real life, uh, but with an added dose of comedy, action, all that stuff. And I appreciate the attention to detail when it comes to recreating all these things, especially from the uh, Shogunate eras and all that stuff, uh, the warring periods, all that. That's all super fascinating. I love history. That's one of my favorite subjects growing up. But for this title, I don't know. It sort of feels like this long, dragged out history book that I'm reading filled with pretty pictures. And I don't mean that to insult the book because it's actually really well drawn and the story gets interesting as you keep reading along, but it's definitely a heavy slog to get through. The characters, I mean, some of them are very stereotypical to stories that you've read about and old samurai films. Meanwhile, you have the main character who is called Elusive because he has this uncanny ability to evade capture and he's running away from different forces of evil and all that stuff that seek to, uh, you know, decimate his family. He's one of the last survivors, so this is essentially a Shonen Jump style revenge story. The character is going to go back and train and become better, a better hero, a better person and come back and reclaim what was lost. He lost his family, which was really sad and all that stuff, but it just feels like this really long exposition, especially that first chapter. It was uh, so many pages of exposition dumps, character information, settings, uh, this character is doing this, and this is, uh, they're worried about it because of this, and it's dynamics like that that really turned me off the book, and a lot of people on different, on uh, different live streams suggested, hey, give it another shot, let's see if the story picks up, and it does, it, there are some mystical elements, uh, sparkled throughout that really do keep the story, uh, a little bit, new and refreshing. Uh, the character of Hojo has some allies and they're not as what they appear to be at first glance and there's uh, more to that. But regardless, it's still a little bit too early to tell. It's definitely not my favorite of the new reads, I gotta be honest with you guys, but I just enjoy the setting. I don't know, I'm not necessarily looking forward to reading it week after week like I am with other titles, but I'm still excited about it and I want to see how the story evolves and if it repeats certain events from real life or if it does its own thing, we'll have to see. The next manga is I Tell C from Kazuza Inaoka and this story tells of a popular female celebrity who is murdered. The investigation leads to a suspicious woman whose next target may be the famous actor Tagame. What could the suspect's motive be? Twin detectives are on the suspect's trail, but then a unique take on the crime suspense genre. What I've just read to you guys from the official source, the Manga Plus app, it tells, uh, doesn't really tell the story in a way that 
hooks you and makes you want to continue reading. We follow the characters of Risa Aoi, who is a little bit unconventional in her methods. You see, she's enamored, to say the least. <laughs> she's fallen in love with the criminal she's after because she's experienced this firsthand. She was kidnapped, and that, you know, led to trauma, and as a result, she sort of developed this unique style that the police department, they don't really approve of her methods, but they kind of utilize her in a way, uh, shamefully, because they know she can get results, although it's in an unconventional manner. And you have the character of Sakon Fukatsuki, who sees that and is willing to work in an unconventional matter. He lost his father, who was a police detective, and through some dialogue we learned that uh, Risa worked together with him, uh, from what I remember. So now Sakon wants to continue that and not only catch these uh, crazy serial killers and criminals, but also work with Risa and maybe try and help her because it is a little bit odd for a character to fall in love with the people that could potentially end up murdering you. But I tell C, uh, I usually like crime manga or crime stories in general and this one is a little bit unconventional. Obviously you have the serious tone of the previous characters of Sakon and Ukon, which is his brother I should have mentioned earlier, and how they're solving their cases and once you see uh, Risa's uh, method, the art changes and her character design is so pretty and, and uh, sparkling with joy that it sort of clashes with the harsh reality of this being a story about murder and criminals and saving people from uh, horrendous individuals. So I'm really looking forward to continuing the story. Lots of mysteries out in the air. Looking forward to it. Really excited. I tell C. I think it's uh, worth your time if you're into crime themed uh, stories. Recently Haikyuu ended, which was one of the longest running sports manga of all time. Now there's an empty gap in the Shonen Jump magazine for the next sports title. And in comes Nine Dragons Ball Parade. This is a story by two individuals, Ashibi Fukui and Yuki Kamata, I hope I said that right, and it stars Hakuo Gakuin's mighty baseball team, who is consistently making it to the Koshien, and Tamao Azukida, who dreams of making said team. To achieve his goal, Tamao does extensive research and undergoes a strict daily training regimen. But at tryouts, Tamao meets the enigmatic genius pitcher, Tao Ryudo, and the course of his destiny may be forever changed. If people aren't laughing, then you're not dreaming big enough. A new baseball tale for the era begins. So obviously with sports titles, there are certain character arcs and story beats that are very familiar. If you've read a dozen of these from your slam dunks to your haikus to cross game, what, whatever sports title you like, there is a common element to it and the characters go through similar events. And this is not this isn't something new in uh, Nine Dragons Ball Parade, but what really resonated with me when I read this, I thought, oh, here we go, it's going to be another generic baseball manga. I've seen a few of the anime adaptations of the different baseball shows, but this one has something different. Right from the start, you have a character who is nerdy, but in a good way, and he is... Uh, he's working hard and he wants to make that dream of his come true. He's a catcher and he's training day and day to become the best that he can be to join this all-star elite uh, baseball team at this prestigious school, uh, school and all that stuff. And when he finally arrives, he does the tryouts and all that stuff. And he actually starts out pretty rough. I mean, he gets through the physical stuff and he goes on to the second part of the exam, which was like an actual exhibition game between the people trying out. And in there, we meet the character of Tao, like I mentioned earlier, this really quirky, enigmatic character that is a breath of fresh air because his relation with Tamao by the end of the manga is, or at the ending of the first chapter, I should say, is sincere, pure, and quite wholesome. And we don't rarely get that, aside from maybe like Hinata in Haikyuu, where you see so his, um, where you see how much of a 
joyous person he is in relation to the team and how he gets everybody together and friendships form and all that stuff but there's still adversities between the two main characters here in ball parade it's a little bit different right from the gate these two characters tao and tamao they really do click with one another and they understand and they form a nice uh cohesive unit and you know if you watch baseball if you like the sport you know the the relationship and bond that has to be there the chemistry i should say between a pitcher and a catcher that is uh, the essential dynamic right uh, everybody else moves with the rhythm that these two players are gonna implement on the field so uh yeah like i was saying the story could have gone for a little bit more of a grittier tone or something like that. And we do get this awesome twist in the chapter where something happens where you think, well, that's the story beat that we were looking for and Tamao is going to do this. And then comes the swerve and something completely different happens, which I did not see coming. And as a result, we get the potential of a great uh, friendship in the making and a great baseball series at that. The art is very clean. Nothing too spectacular or grandiose, but it just works for what it's trying to do. Actually, the baseball scenes look really nice the way they're drawn and really easy to follow. That's going to be great uh, for continuing this story along because I suspect we're going to spend several chapters in the diamond itself with all the uh, pitching action and, and uh, uh, sports playing and all that stuff. But yeah, fantastic series. I love the first chapter so much. I love the two main characters and the relationship that's going to be formed from there is quite wholesome and severely needed in a world where a lot of manga tend to go with the dynamic of half and half. One character might be wholesome, the other one might be a little bit edgy and the dynamic, you know, them trying to figure how they're going to work together. No, from the get-go here, Tao and uh, Tamao are both uh, quite charming individuals, and I'm looking forward to their baseball careers, basically. The final manga on our list on this episode is Witch Watch, drawn and written by Kenta Shinohara. You might know him from the excellent underrated sci-fi series Astra Lost in Space, and of course the quirky Sket Dance, among other series. So what exactly is Witch Watch about? Well, we follow Morihito, a boy with the strength of an ogre, literally. He's an ogre, who is about to start living together with his childhood friend, Nico, who is training to be a witch. Nico's magic leads to all sorts of unpredictable trouble with the two teens under one roof. Let the fantastical antics begin. So that description basically tells you all you need to know. It's a rom-com with supernatural elements and fantastical stuff like witches, ogres. Uh, basically, Morihito is from this line of ogre characters, and they do explain how ogres are formed, even though they have human uh, features. And he is friends with uh, Nico, who is now, you know, trying to training to be a full-fledged witch. Nico's family needs. Morihito to protect her, and instead of Nico acquiring a, an animal familiar, they assigned Morihito himself as a familiar. If that does not happen and he neglects his duties or whatever, he gets turned back into this weird tiger bull type creature or something crazy like that. So what we basically have is this rom-com of these two supernatural uh, characters living together on a household and just uh, <laughs> Morihito's going to protect her from different uh, tragic uh, epic things that are going to happen. So you can sort of follow up from there. It's nothing too complex, but the fun of Witch Watch is, of course, just that, you know, you have a witch and they're living in modern society they're trying to hide their powers but not really so of course comical hijinks will happen and uh, they might reveal their powers or crazy stuff happens when their spells go awry and it's stuff like that that keeps the momentum going and with really lovable chemistry between the two leads and i think uh from these four titles this might be my favorite one 
I really enjoyed that first chapter, and I'm really looking forward to continuing Witch Watch and seeing where everything goes. Uh, I love the uh, dynamic between the two of them. Even though it's a rom-com, even though Morihito is apprehensive at first of this new task, he doesn't seem to mind that now he's living with um, the character of Nico. Meanwhile, Nico, she's fallen in love with Morihito after not seeing him for many years. Now they're, I think, what, 16, 17, something like that. So uh, she's uh, falling in love with him. Uh, he doesn't seem to notice it first that obviously might change um the mangaka for this series i'd love astro lost in space that's one of my favorite sci-fi stories i'd love that so much so i'm looking forward to what he can do with um sort of this supernatural rom-com if you will so that's sort of my first impressions on these four new manga series i'm pretty sure you are very vocal about these four and have very different opinions i would like to know what you thought of these four manga if you've read them let me know in the comments section down below so that's about it guys thank you so much for tuning in thank you so much for liking commenting subscribing and being a part of a we can geek them if you like this video please share it around hit the like button so youtube knows that you want to see more content like this of course you can follow me on social media you can look for the merch link in the description below and yeah that's about it i've got to go thank you everybody once again i will catch all of you on our next video.